Hello everyone in CardioMind's channel and we are starting today a new series of videos in our channel under the title of Cardio Pharma Tips. We all consider cardiac pharmacology a complex branch that may take years in order to understand its details and its steps and tricks. But it is of utmost importance to most of us to understand it because of course you need to know the medications that you are using in our clinical practice regarding the mechanisms, indications, side effects and contraindications and this is of course the crucial part of our clinical practice. So let's try through these videos to simplify the cardiac pharmacology pharmacology in order to understand its basics and then going in depth to understand most of the medications that we write in our prescriptions. And today we are starting with the topic of abbreviations that we commonly use in our prescriptions. Most of the terminologies that we use to describe diseases in our clinical practice are derived from Latin language. And so the abbreviation in our prescriptions are also derived from Latin language. So let's try to understand them. The most famous one is OD. OD is a Latin term for omni in die, which means once per day. So we use it in the prescription to describe that this medication should be taken only once per day. We have PID, or sometimes we write it as PDS. PID is standing for pis in die, and PDS is standing for pis die sumendum, which means twice per day. So these both terms are used interchangeably to describe that the medication should be taken twice per day. TID and TDS have the same idea of the last abbreviation. TID standing for ter in die, and TDS standing for ter disumendum, and both of them mean that this medication should be taken three times per day. The same idea again. QID standing for quater in die, and QDS standing for quater disumendum, and both of them mean that this medication should be taken four times per day. One of the confusing abbreviation is QD, which stands for Quakidai, which means that this medication should be taken every day. It may have the same concept as OD, but it is not as specific as it, because it doesn't comment on the frequency of using this medication. Another confusing abbreviation is QAD, sometimes it is written as QOD, both of them standing for Quaki Ultra die which means this medication should be taken every other day so for example the patient would take this medication on a day and the next day he would skip the dose and then resume it on the next day the problem with these abbreviations is that they are considered to be dangerous because sometimes they may be confused with QID not all of the doctors are good at handwriting so the pharmacist or the nurse may read it as QID so here he would give the dose four or eight times the actual dose and instead of giving the medication every day or every other day he would give it four times per day that's why it's better to avoid QD and QAD because they are confusing with QID there are some abbreviations that we use to describe the time interval for the frequency of dosage. For example, Q4H standing for quaka for aura, which means every four hours. Q6H means every six hours. Q8H means every eight hours. And Q12H means every 12 hours. So what is the better method to describe the frequency of dosage? This way, or the previous way of mentioning OD, PID, or TID. With no doubt, it is more accurate to mention the specific time interval, like every 6 hours, every 8 hours, every 12 hours, because these terms doesn't mean the same as QID, or TID, or PID, because in the last one it doesn't specify the time interval, it just mentioned twice, three times, or four times per day. That's why, for example, PID, it may be the two medications should be separated by 12 hours or 8 hour intervals between the dosage. But when I mention to the patient Q12 hour, I mean that you need to separate the two dosage by 12 hours. That's why it is better to mention the specific time interval rather than the old classic way. 
Another famous abbreviation is PRN, which we usually use with analgesics and sublingual nitrates. It stands for prorenata, which means as needed or as required. So we use this abbreviation when I want to tell the patient that this medication, for example, analgesic or sublingual nitrate, should be used when you feel the symptom, not on a regular basis. D slash C is another famous abbreviation used in hospitals, mean discontinue or discharge and used mostly in medical charts in hospitals. But it is a confusing abbreviation. Not all doctors and all nurses understand it in the same way. That's why some hospitals doesn't approve the use of this term. Another famous abbreviation is AC, standing for anti sepum means that this medication should be taken before meals, or PC, which stands for post sepum meaning that this medication should be taken after meals. And from the same Latin word of sepum comes the terminology of post sepal angina, which means that this patient develops anginal pain after meals. And by the way, this is nearly the same etymology for AM and PM that we use in our daily life. AM standing for antimeridium means the time before midday, so it describes the duration from midnight to noon. And PM standing for post meridium, it describes the duration from noon to midnight. And these are usually used in the 12 hour systems although in some countries and some hospitals prefer the 24 hour format sometimes called the military time in order to avoid any confusion if someone forgot to mention am or pm after the time am and pm sometimes are used in weird abbreviations called qdam or qd pm they add the two words of quacky day so mean this medication should be taken once daily in the morning or once daily in the evening but of course they are too long to use as abbreviation and so usually they are not used and instead the doctor may write down when he wants the patient to take this medication regarding the rules of administration we have PO standing for per os meaning that this medication should be taken orally PR standing for per rectum standing that this medication should be taken rectally like suppositories or enema IV standing for intravenous I am standing for intramuscular, SC standing for subcutaneous for injections, and SL standing for sublingual roots, as for example the most famous nitrates and some forms of oral steroids. And by the way, MBO standing for nil per os, meaning nothing by mouse, so this means that this medication should not receive any meals or medication by mouth due to a medical condition, for example, intestinal obstruction. Iatrogenic is an adjective that we use to describe diseases caused by medications or by procedure done by doctors. It is a term of Greek origin as iatro standing for iatrus, which is a Greek word meaning healer or physician, and genic it is also of Greek origin meaning producing, and so it means that this adverse effect or this disease is induced by a medical treatment or a surgical procedure done by a doctor or a physician, so iatrogenic is a Greek word for done by the doctor. The take home message of our video today, so we should mention the abbreviations that you should not use in your prescriptions because they may lead to medical errors. SID is not an approved abbreviation. Some doctors may mean by it single per day. It is usually mistaken for BID, so better to use OD to mean once per day instead. CC meaning that this medication should be taken with food. Of course, it's better to write down clearly with food because CC may stand for cubic centimeters resulting in confusion. BT standing for bedtime. Of course, it's better to write down bedtime clearly instead. And SQ, some doctors may mean by it subcutaneous. It is not an approved abbreviation and better to use SC to mean subcutaneous route. Try to avoid QD, quacky die, and better to write down every day, and much better to write once per day. QID, it is better to write down instead four times a day, or every six hours, as it would be better to mention the time intervals. QAD or QOD, it is better to write down clearly every other day. We can see here that these three abbreviations are confusing and so may result in medical errors. And of course, the weird abbreviation of QDAM or QDPM, most of the doctors will not understand what you mean. And so it is better to write down once in the morning, 
or once in the evening. Thank you very much for watching the first video in the series of Cardio Pharma Tips on CardioMyza channel and wait for the next videos that are trying to simplify our beloved branch of cardiac pharmacology.